Good evening, everyone. We will wait for a couple of more, couple of more minutes, and we will start. So I can see a lot of new faces who were not there in the previous sessions. So NPTEL is starting this gendering session for the second time. So the first one was lasted for twelve weeks. Now this phase two will go till January end. That means till the next gate exam. Okay, so anyway, we will wait for a couple of more minutes, and uh, I will explain what we are going to do for the next, say, ten weeks or so. Okay. I hope I am audible. If some, if someone can confirm that, that would be great. Yes, you are audible. Yeah, thanks. Where are you from, sir? I'm from Kerala, but right now I'm in Bangalore. I am a PhD student at uh, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. Oh, sir, thank you. So, like, what are your background? In the sense that uh, whether you are in the final year, third year, or after B Tech, my first born in I am completed M Tech, so okay. I am also doing a PhD interview exams. I am okay, 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 great. I do have a gate in twenty twenty two, but uh, for further interviews, I have been preparing for gate also. Okay, fine, great. So best wishes. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. Okay, uh, it's uh, six o'clock. Anyway, uh, anyway, uh, officially I welcome everyone to this session. So myself is Krishnan. I am a PhD student at the Department of Electrical Communication Engineering at uh, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. Okay. So mostly I will be doing. So uh, can. Uh, you people please raise your hand if you had attended any of the previous sessions that means in, that means in the phase 1 of the nptel gate uh, this mentoring session or this live question solving sessions if you had attended please raise your hand so that i will get an idea how many of you are attending for the first first time sorry <coughs> no one yeah i can see one person i know okay anyway so um mostly i will be doing questions related with uh, so first of all this process will go as follows so in week tuesday 6 7 i will be handling the session so roughly three or four maybe five questions if time permits we will do we will solve previous year gate questions from uh, ec paper okay so i will be mostly handling questions related with communication systems uh, signals and systems maybe some engineering mathematics related with linear algebra and probability theory okay if you are having some questions related with that maybe if you are stuck with some 
questions you can hand over to me so i may solve that in the next class or if you are having some specific questions from previous year gate exams you can tell me the question number or you can just um, yeah uh, unmute yourself and you can tell that okay so that uh, we we can discuss those questions in the next class so as i told once i will be comfortable with questions related with uh, communication theory mostly and signals and system and uh, some maths questions specifically related with this uh, uh, linear algebra and probability theory okay so today uh, i can see roughly some 20 people hopefully more people will join yesterday i have heard that around 30 35 people were there in the session so uh, okay so let's begin okay so the first question today i am uh, i have prepared four questions all of them are related with uh, communication systems the first one is related with source coding and this question specifically this question and some other questions are related with uh, receiver probability error performance of the systems okay and one system is related with some filter some bandwidth related question okay signal bandwidth related question so anyway let us uh, get into the first question i hope my screen is visible to everyone okay so the question is as follows this is a question from gate 2016 uh, s3 means session 3 okay so the question is as follows an analog baseband signal band limited to 100 hertz is sampled at the nyquist rate the samples are quantized into four message symbols that occur independently with probabilities p1 equal to p4 equal to 0.125 and the remaining two probabilities p2 and p3 are equal so we need to find or it is asked to find out the information rate of the message source okay and we need to find the information rate in bits per second so i hope the question is clear to everyone so there is a source first of all there is a uh, analog baseband signal and has a maximum frequency component 100 hertz okay so f max equal to 100 hertz so you can visualize say some signal of this sort okay 100 is the maximum frequency component of the signal 100 hertz this is the suppose this is the frequency spectrum okay you, you can imagine such a signal so the signal is having a maximum frequency of 100 hertz and the signal is sampled at the nyquist rate that means the signal is here and and the signal has been passed through a sampler okay and the signal is sampled at the rate nyquist rate i hope all of you are familiar with this with this term nyquist rate means nothing but twice the maximum frequency so all of you may be knowing the sampling theorem the well known nyquist sampling theorem it says that in order to reconstruct the original analog signal the signal has to be sampled at least at a rate twice the maximum frequency component of the signal so that frequency twice the maximum frequency component of the signal is known as the nyquist rate so this is the minimum rate at which if you sample the signal you can reconstruct the signal back okay without any error so now what is the sampling frequency that is given as the nyquist rate that is nothing but 2 times f max so the sampling rate fs is 200 hertz clear so now each sample is quantized into four levels okay what does that mean for example say if i am having a signal that has the value ranging from say minus k to plus k some real number k okay i am quantizing that means i am basically converting the discrete time signal to digital signal okay so basically i am having an analog signal analog signal means it's continuous in time when i am sampling that signal i am getting a discrete signal that means now the signal is having values only at some discrete instances of time 
now quantizing means i am quantizing that into multiple levels that means i am digitalizing the signal okay for example the signal value is say from minus infinity to minus some uh, say five okay the signal will be taken as some minus v2 volt and if the signal value if the value is say in between minus 5 and 0 the value will be taken as say minus v1 volt and between 0 and 5 the sampling voltage will be taken as v1 volt and maybe 5 to infinity it will be taken as v2 some example okay so i hope you understood what i am trying to convey if you are having some questions you can ask right now so basically i am quantizing the sample signal into four levels or into four message symbols and that symbols occur independently with probabilities okay there are four symbols right or four message uh, symbols that are represented these voltages and they are having some probability mass function p1 p2 p3 p4 and it is given that p1 equal to p4 equal to 0.125 then what is the value of p2 and p3 can somebody tell 0.375 okay great so basically 0.125 p1 is equal to 0.125 and p4 equal to 0.125 and we know that p1 plus p2 plus p3 plus p4 equal to this equal to what one yeah this should be equal to one in order to become this a valid probability mass function okay so the total probability must sum up to one and it is given that p2 equal to p3 that means p1 and p4 we know 0.125 plus p2 P3 equal to P2, so that P2 e plus 0.125 equal to 1. That means 2 times P2 equal to 1 minus 0.125 plus 0.125 is 0.25, which is equal to 0.75. And P2 equal to P3 equal to 0.75 divided by 2. That is precisely equal to 0.375 as somebody told. Okay, now we got the probability mass function. Now the next very important question what is the meaning of information rate can somebody tell what is the meaning of that what does information rate mean so this is nothing but as the term implies it means that the rate at which the information is passed on to the channel so so now the problem is like this there is a source okay there is a uh, sampler quantizer everything will be here and now i am having a source that emits the problem boils down to this okay there is a source it emits four message symbols okay with probabilities p1 p2 p3 p4 which is equal to 0.125 and 0.375, 0.375 and 0.375 as we have found out. So up to this, is everything clear? Now, we need to discuss something completely different from what we have discussed till now to solve this problem. Okay. So, Till now, we were discussing some signal processing. Now, we are going to discuss some information theory. If you are having any questions, please uh, unmute and ask, or you can type down in the chat window. No questions? OK, then let us go ahead. Now, what is the information that is that has been conveyed or suppose if the source emits one of these four symbols what is the information that is obtained by that process 
how can we quantify information is is first of all is information a measurable quantity that is the underlying question yes of course that's why this question has been asked right so how can we measure information information can be measured as the reduction in uncertainty or the information contained in a source is quantified by the entropy of the system i do not know how many of all of you must have heard that term entropy right entropy or the measure of uncertainty entropy is associated with information so this reduction in entropy is the information so basically the information contained in a source is nothing but the entropy of that or this is the come i i am not complicating things so entropy of a random variable x having probability mass function say p1 t2 up to say pk is nothing but is denoted with h of x this is equal to summation i equal to 1 to k pi into log 1 by pi so in order to find this entropy in bits the base of the logarithm must be equal to 2 so the information of the source or or the or the uncertainty regarding the outcome of the source is measured using this quantity entropy okay this is very important so in order to find h of x in bits the base of the logarithm must be equal to 2 okay if the base of the logarithm is say e the natural logarithm then the unit will be nats n a t s if the base of the logarithm is 10 then the unit will be hartley's so in communication theory we stick with this unit bits okay for information or for entropy that is nothing but bits so now we need to find the entropy of the random variable x having probability mass function as we have found out p1 p2 p3 p4 now it's just a matter of uh computing by just substituting in this entropy formula so i will find that i will denote that with h which is equal to p1 is 0.125 0.125 is what that is 1 by 8 right 1 by 8 log 8 plus next 0.375 is nothing but 3 by 8 right 3 by 8 into log 8 by 3 plus again p3 equal to 3 by 8 into log 8 by 3 plus p4 is again 0.125 sorry this is 0.125 okay it's given in the question uh equal to 1 by 8 log 8 to the base 2. so you can easily find out this this is nothing but 1 by 8 into log 8 log 8 is 8 is 2 cube so log 8 is 3 so this is 3 by 8 and this you can calculate using calculator basically this can be written as 3 by 8 log 8 i hope uh, calculator can be used in the gate exam right so it's just a matter of uh, using that 3 by 8 log 3 Plus three by eight log eight minus three by eight log three. So log a by b is log a minus log b. That's what I'm doing here. So log eight is again three. This is three by eight. So three by eight plus three by eight is six by eight. That is three by four. Plus ah uh, three by eight log eight plus three by eight log eight. That means again log eight is three. So nine by eight plus this nine by eight, that is nothing but nine by four minus two these terms, right? So that is nothing but three by four log three. So this is equal to three by four plus nine by four is twelve by four. That is three minus three by four log three. So this you can find out as one point eight one bits. okay now 
how do we find out the information rate can somebody tell that so what is the sampling rate that we have found out already that is equal to the nyquist rate which is 200 hertz that means in every second i will get 200 samples from the sampler right and each sample contains this much of information 1.81 bits on an average so the information rate how can we find out that by multiplying yeah correct so basically there are 200 sample on an average each sample contains this much of information 1.81 bits of information so the information rate that is equal to 200 into 1.81 so the unit is bits per second because hertz is 1 by second right so this is equal to 362 bits per second so the answer to the question is 362 bits per second now i can reformulate the question once again okay so in order to have this information rate maximum what should be the probability distribution of these four symbols i am having four symbols okay and the sampling rate everything is same but in order to have the information rate maximum what should be the probability mass function or what should be the value of p1 p2 p3 and p4 so for that basically what is this probability is controlled it controls this entropy h of x right correct so when will this entropy maximum this entropy will be maximum you can take it as a fact okay i am not going to prove this entropy will be maximum when the symbols are equally likely or they are uniformly distributed that means when there are four symbols that all of them are equally likely means all of them are having probability which is equal to what 1 by 1 by 4 right there are four symbols they are equally likely means um the probability is 1 by 4 so the information rate will be maximum when the symbols are uh, having probabilities 1 by 4 anyway in the question the probabilities are given as 0.125 0.125 0.375 0. 0.375 so the answer to the question is 362 bits per second any questions so if there are no questions we will move to the next question but if you are having some question you can ask right now because there is an another session after 7 as far as i know so we may not be getting enough time after this class so basically in the previous ah uh, sadat and you can move ahead sorry you can go to the next question okay 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 thanks yeah yeah so yeah so compared to the the last phase of this um, nptel gate mentoring session here during that phase 1 we used to go after 7 o'clock because there was no class after that but unfortunately this time we do not have that luxury because after 7 o'clock 7 to 8 there is an another session that is handled by somebody else okay so if you are having some questions you can ask right now that's what i meant so anyway i will go to the next question this is a completely different question but again more or less related with communication systems you can relate this question with uh, signals and system as well okay so i hope you are able to see the screen you are able to see the question right you are able to see the question right i will slightly zoom it up okay so again a very interesting question this is from 2015 uh session 1 question paper as i have written here so the question gives a figure in fact there are two figures figure a and figure b have a close look into that in the system shown in figure a this figure uh m of t is a low pass signal with bandwidth w hertz as we have um imagined in the or visualized in the last question here also you can visualize 
a low pass signal just like this that means the frequency uh, is limited and there is a maximum frequency beyond that there is no frequency components and also it has dc component f equal to 0 has a non zero value that is what is the meaning of low pass signal so here the maximum frequency is wh or the bandwidth is given as wh in figure b the frequency response of a band pass filter is given and note that this band pass filter is here in figure a and h of f is given here or the magnitude of h of f is given here in figure p okay and the input signal is x of t which is equal to m of t into cos 2400 pi t and m of t is a low pass signal with bandwidth w heads this is say m of f you can visualize just like this okay uh, now here we have the desired output z of t of the of the uh, system in figure a but what we need to do we need to amplify the signal x of t and the desired output is 10 times x of t but unfortunately this amplifier outputs some non-linear components in addition to the desired output so the output of the amplifier is y of t which is equal to y of t equal to 10 times x of t plus x square t okay so basically there is a square term, a non-linear term. And the bandpass filter is used to annihilate or get rid of that component. Basically using that bandpass filter, we need to filter out the components corresponding to x, x square t. Then we will get the desired output, right? So now the question is that, if it is desired that the output signal z of t equal to 10 times x of t, then the maximum value of w should be strictly less than what okay so what is the maximum value of w w such that the output of this system figure a is z of t which is equal to 10 times the input signal x of t which is equal to m of t into cos 2400 pi t is the question clear okay yes yeah how do we go ahead with this it's not very difficult it's an easy question in fact so anyway the pan bandpass filter the frequency response is given so the natural um, way to go ahead is that we can visualize all the signals in the frequency domain correct so first of all uh, x of t so suppose this is the uh, frequency spectrum of m of t then what will be the magnitude spectrum or the frequency spectrum of x of t where x of t equal to m of t into cos 2400 pi t so what is the frequency of this cosine signal it has a frequency say f1 equal to 1200 hertz right so the frequency of the cosine signal is 1200 hertz so now what is the frequency domain representation of x of t or the Fourier transform, Fourier transform of x of t? That is nothing but 1 by 2 times m of f minus f1 plus m of f plus f1. Right? Does everyone know this? So this is a very key thing you will have to use multiple times in a gate exam itself. This is very important. It's very easy to derive. If you want, I can derive this. Basically, cos, say cos 2 pi F1t can be written as half times e power j 2 pi F1t plus e power minus j 2 pi f one right? Where j is the square root of minus 1. 
so now you can simply apply the uh, fourier transform e- equation and you can get this very easily okay so if you want i can do that otherwise i am not going to do that if somebody wants to do that i can otherwise i am going ahead anyway you can you should be knowing this thing when you are going for the gate exam okay so when you are modulating a low pass signal or a signal with a cosine or a sine signal the magnitude response the frequency response of the signal will look like this so in this case okay suppose this is the magnitude spectrum of or the frequency spectrum of m of t then the frequency spectrum of x of t will look like this the same spectrum will be repeated centered at f1 and minus f1 here f1 is 1200 and here it is minus 1200 and note that there is a half component that means there is this is scaling compared to this say this is having magnitude a at f equal to 0 then this will be equal to a by 2 some real number a that's the only difference otherwise the same spectrum will be repeated twice that is precisely what is the meaning of this right m of f minus f1 means i am shifting m of f by a factor f1 to the right and m of f plus f1 means i am writing i am shifting f to the left by a factor f1 right that is the meaning of that so this is the frequency spectrum of x of t this is magnitude of x of f okay now again come back to the question so that is the input signal now what is y of t y of t equal to 10 times x of t plus x square t okay let us focus on this x square t this 10 times x of t let it be here x square t means m square t into cos square 2400 right 2400 pi t so we can use this trigonometric identity here cos square x equal to 1 plus cos 2x divided by 2 that means y of t equal to y of t equal to 10 times x of t plus m square t into 1 plus cos 2 times 2400 means 4800 pi t divided by whole divided by 2 correct that means y of t equal to 10 times x of t is m of t into cos 2400 pi t plus m square t divided by 2 plus m square t divided by 2 into cos 4800 pi t right now again we need to see all these three signals in the frequency domain we have already uh, we have already seen the frequency response of the first part m of t into cos 2400 pi t if you multiply that with 10 that is just the scaling here this will become 10 times that is the only difference okay now how will be the frequency spectrum of m square t so m square t and m square t divided by 2 will have the same spectrum the same shape and same frequency components only there will be a magnitude scaling by a factor 1 by 2 okay so f- let us focus on m square t what is m square t m square t equal to m of t into m of t correct now what is the fourier transform i am denoting that with f of m square t that is nothing but fourier transform of m of t is it into again fourier transform of m of t no right it's convolution so everyone know this right 
multiplication in time domain corresponds to convolution in frequency domain that's duality property and in the same way multiplication in the frequency domain corresponds to the convolution in the time domain right so this is nothing but m of f convoluted with m of f the fourier transform of m of t is m of f and m of f convolution m of f so now how do we get the frequency spectrum or at least the frequency region at which m, m square t reside yeah somebody was telling something any questions can i go ahead it's clear right yes yeah so here uh, m of f is this assume this is the case and the maximum frequency component is w then how how would the convolution of m of f with itself look like i do not want the shape i just need the frequency region so when you convolute two low pass signals the bandwidth of those signals will get added up so basically if you are having two signals say some signal of this sort w and something else say w1 and w2 it need not be same then the resulting signal will have some shape i am not bothered about the shape i am bothered only about the uh, frequency components present okay this will be w1 plus w2 so this is again something that you need to keep in your mind when you convolute two low pass signals then the resulting signal the convoluted signal will have a bandwidth which is the sum of the bandwidths of the two convoluted signals okay so now um when you are convoluting m of f with m of f but that is when the domain is same right sorry you mean convolution in frequency domain right not time yeah. domain no even in time domain uh, in, if you are having two time limited signals okay then the the whatever region it is will get added up the suppose you are having so in frequency domain you are having lot of other properties basically there will if it's a real signal you will be having um, basically you can call it as bandwidth there will be a symmetry and all right but even if you take a discrete signals you can take say having sig long having length m and then then the resulting convoluted signal in discrete domain will be having a um, support m plus n minus 1 there will be a minus 1 in that case in discrete case but in um, in the continuous case it will just get added up if it's a low pass signal so if it if it is in time domain it must contain zero t equal to zero that the origin or the or the uh, yeah when you are convoluting there will be a point of focus right that means uh, you are yeah. yeah you will be basically um, taking a mirror image of the signal right while you are convoluting to signals so basically that must have a non zero value okay is that okay sadat is that clear okay yeah i think he is muted okay so basically you are convoluting any two signals having support some x and y then the resulting convoluted signal will have a support x plus y okay so when it comes to frequent yeah sadat you are trying to tell again something no no nothing nothing it's clear right yes yes basically if you are convoluting two signals maybe it can be in time domain or it can be in frequency domain it has a support of x and the other one has a support of y i'm talking about continuous signals and if you convolute those two signals then the resulting signal will have a support x plus y okay so when it comes to um, low pass signals this will in fact become the addition of bandwidths that's the moral of the story 
Okay, so here m of f convolute convoluted with m of f, which is the Fourier transform of m square t, will have a shape that may look like this. If the other one was a triangular signal, this will look like this, and having a bandwidth w plus w, which is equal to two w. Okay, so I will erase all those things, all the other things, okay. and I need to get some space here. Yeah. So again, coming back to this. So this has a, the first signal has a frequency component less than or equal to. Sorry, uh, it has frequency components between thousand two hundred minus W and thousand two hundred plus W, right? So here it is thousand two hundred plus W, and this is thousand two hundred minus W. So the X of F occupies a frequency region. Between thousand two hundred minus W up to thousand two hundred plus W. That is the desired frequency region, right? And uh, m square t occupies a region which is f less than or equal to two W. Correct. And how would the frequency spectrum of the third component look like? M square t into cos four thousand eight hundred pi t. that is nothing but again you need to shift this spectrum to the right as well as left correct basically you are modulating m square t divided by 2 with a cosine signal m square t divided by 2 is a low pass signal and this cosine signal has a frequency say f2 equal to 2400 hertz 4800 Divided by two, that is two thousand four hundred hertz. So this will look like this. Send it at two thousand four hundred and has a bandwidth two W. So this will have two thousand four hundred plus two W, two thousand four hundred minus two W. Correct. So, and the same thing will be in in this side as well. So two thousand four hundred. Minus two thousand four hundred plus two W and minus two thousand four hundred minus two W. So this is how the third component the in the frequency domain look like this component. Now what is the question? So I am passing this Y of t to a bandpass filter which is having frequency response as in figure B. Correct, and at the output of this filter, only ten times x of t should remain, and all the other components should be annihilated. So we will again write this very carefully. Okay, so the third component will have value between c. You can see here two thousand four hundred minus two w up to two thousand four hundred plus two w. Correct. So two thousand four hundred minus two w. Less than or equal to f, less than or equal to two thousand four hundred plus two w. So now you can have lot of frequency spectrum or the frequency uh, response of the filter. So I will redraw this again. Look at this carefully. If I make a mistake, you please point out. So it has a passband between seven hundred hertz to thousand seven hundred hertz. Correct. So this will look like this. So I'm just copying that h of f. So this has value between seven hundred and thousand seven hundred. Similarly here minus seven hundred and minus thousand seven hundred. Correct. So now this region must be inside this, right? Then only that component will come out of the filter. Ten times m of t into. I am talking about the first component. This component. Ten times um, m of t into cos two thousand four hundred pi t. Correct. So, what does that mean? So thousand two hundred minus w. The left side of this signal. 
should be greater than or equal to 700. That means W less than or equal to 500. So is this the maximum value? I do not know. Somebody posted something. What is the jam file? What is that? Okay. Somebody just stamps. Okay. Yeah. So now what are the other conditions? The other components must be annihilated, right? So basically the the M square T component must be less than or equal to 700. Correct? So that means 2W should be less than or equal to 700. That means W must be less than or equal to 350 hertz. So we will get multiple conditions and finally we will decide which one gives the most stringent condition. And similarly, the left side of this 2400 mi minus 2W should come only after this, right? Basically, we need to annihilate this component as well. That means 2400 minus 2W should be greater than or equal to 1700. That means again, 2W less than or equal to 700 and W less than or equal to 350 hertz. So now we are having three conditions. So what is the maximum permissible uh, value of W? Is it 350 or is it 500? Hmm? 500. Why is it 500? It should be 350, right? Because it should annihilate the other components as well. Basically, M square T will be having, uh, if it is 500, M square T will have frequency components up to, 350. yeah, it is 350, up to 1000 hertz, right? That means those components will come at the output of the filter, right? So that shouldn't happen. So we have to take the minimum value. All these conditions must satisfy. W less than 350. That hence means W less than 350 is not guaranteed. Suppose W equal to 400, then you will have serious trouble, correct? Because other frequency components will come at the output of the uh, output of the filter, right? So the answer to the question is 350 hertz. Is that clear, Sadat? Is that clear? I think your, your sound is not coming out. Anyway, so if you are having some questions, you can ask now. Otherwise, I think we have time to do one more question. That is related with uh, some receiver, some decoding problem. Some map decoding. I do not know whether you are familiar with that or not. OK. Any questions so far? So far, so good? No, sir. No. OK. Then we will see the next question. OK. So this is the question. So this is a question from 2019 gate um, EC exam. As you can see, this is question number 40 from that exam. So the question talks about a random variable X. I will read the question first. A random variable capital X takes values minus 0.5 and 0.5 with probabilities 1 by 4 and 3 by 4 respectively. The noisy observation of X, which is denoted with Y equal to X plus Z, where Z has... <laughs> Okay, yeah. So the noisy observation of X, which is denoted with capital Y equal to X plus Z, where Z has uniform probability density over the interval minus one and one. X and Z are independent. If the map rule based detector outputs X hat as X hat equal to minus 0.5 if Y less than alpha and X hat equal to 0.5 if y greater than or equal to alpha, then the value of alpha. So this is again a numerical answer type question and we need to find the value of alpha accurate up to two decimal places. Okay. 
so i think the question is clear but anyway i will explain the question once so you can observe this as a, okay yeah gobinath you can ask if you have yeah you can ask why did you raise your hand okay i think it was unintentional okay anyway he he is not asking um so basically this can be viewed as a communication scenario okay there is a channel and the input to the channel is say x x can be either minus 0.5 or plus 0.5 so probability of x equal to minus 0.5 equal to it is given as 1 by 4 in the question and probability of x equal to 0.5 3 by 4 that means with probability 1 by 4 the transmitter will transmit minus 0.5 and the transmitter will transmit 0.5 with probability 3 by 4 okay now there is a channel and the output of the channel is another random variable y which is equal to y plus y which is equal to x plus z where z is the noise okay basically when you are transmitting something over the channel a noise is getting added to that so and to, it is told that z has a uniform probability density over the interval minus 1 and 1 that means it has a uh, probability density function that looks like this minus 1 and 1 right and it has value zero otherwise meaning of Noise can be any value between minus one and one with equal probability. And what is this density? What is this value? Can somebody tell this? What is this value? Someone? It's very simple, right? So the total probability must be equal to one, or the area under the under the probability density function should be equal to one. So this is two, and in order to have area one. This should be equal to half, right? One by two. Yeah, correct. One by two. So, this is the probability density function of the noise z. Now, it is told that x and the the transmitted symbols and the noise are independent, uh, and map rule based detector outputs x hat. Okay. So basically, the at the output of the channel there is a receiver. and the receiver has to make a decision right Sup suppose minus 0.5 has transmitted then anything between minus 1.5 and 0.5 can be received at the output of the channel right because the noise can take any value between minus 1 and plus 1 with equal probability correct does that make sense if i am transmitting Minus point five. If x equal to minus point five, then the y will lie in between minus one point five and point five. Is that clear? Similarly, if x equal to point five, then the output of the channel or the what the receiver receives is something in between minus point five and one point five. Is this clear? Yes. yeah the noise yeah the noise is an additive noise that means it will get added up to it will get added to the transmitted symbol minus 0.5 or plus 0.5 okay it's an additive noise and uh basically if the if the receiver receives something between minus 1.5 and 1.5 so that is the minimum what the receiver can receive is minus 1.5 and the maximum that it can receive is 1.5 right if some real number suppose it receives some real number r that is in between minus 1.5 and 1.5 the the receiver has to make a decision right about the transmitted symbol it can be either minus 0.5 or 0.5 it has to make a decision for making that decision what the receiver uses map rule what is map rule maximum a posterior posterior probability so if you take the first letter of all these three words you will get map 
may approve okay so what does this mean the receiver will take that symbol that has the max that is nothing but probability of x given y okay that means what the receiver observes what the receiver knows is nothing but y right it receives some real value that is the received value that is y right if we observe y which symbol has the most probability maximum probability to happen or the which is the most likely transmitted symbol that is what is trying to see here okay so probability of x given y so basically here there are two x is possible x equal to 0.5 given y and probability of x equal to minus 0.5 given y right if this is greater if probability of x equal to 0.5 given capital y is greater then x hat will be equal to x hat is the decision that will be equal to what will it be 0.5 or minus 0.5 0.5 it is 0.5 correct suppose if it is in the other way around that means um, probability of x equal to 0.5 given y is less than probability of x equal to minus 0.5 given y okay then x hat will be equal to minus 0.5 so whichever is having maximum a posteriori probability that will be the decision okay so if the map rule based detector outputs x hat as minus 0.5 if y less than alpha and 0.5 if y greater than or equal to alpha and we need to find that alpha okay now again let us get into this probability distributions if i am sending x equal to minus 0.5 then y will be in between minus 1.5 and 0.5 right again that will be uniformly distributed because the noise is uniformly distributed so this will look something like this the distribution of distribution of this is nothing but probability of y given x equal to minus 0.5 that means i think it's not very clear I'll rewrite this okay uh, so this is nothing but probability of y the received symbol given x equal to minus 0.5 that means if minus 0.5 is transmitted this is how the this is how the received symbol the density of the received symbol look like correct if i transmit minus 0.5 in between minus 1.5 and 0.5 something can be received at the receiver similarly if x equal to 0.5 is transmitted this is how the distribution of y look like that will be having values between minus 0.5 and plus 1.5 i hope it is right it's not uh, yeah, yeah i will explain it's not basically x can take Values either minus 0.5 or 0.5, right? Suppose I am transmitting minus 0.5. So the noise has a probability density function as this. It is given in the question. It can take any value between minus 1 and plus 1, and it has a uniform probability density. So uniform probability means it has a value 1 by 2 over minus 1 and plus 1. So how this 1 by 2 comes? That is because the area under this should be equal to 1. and also it has values between minus 1 and plus 1 so this height should be equal to half okay so up to this it's clear right now yes. if if i am transmitting minus 0.5 so the noise that is possible to get added has a density between minus 1 and plus 1 that means the received value will be so x plus z if z equal to minus 1 that is the minimum value of the noise that it can get added if that is get suppose if minus 1 got added then the received value will be minus 1.5 right and if 1 was get added suppose if 1 was the noise that got added then the value will be 0.5 and all the other noise components will have value between minus 1 and plus 1 
so the received value will in between minus 1.5 and plus 0.5 ah uh, okay uh, the x axis represent the value of noise oh. oh no no this is not noise this is y this is probability of y given x equal to point minus 0.5 point here it is this is the pdf or the probability density function of the noise so the noise can take any value between minus 1 and plus 1 this is the received symbol y that can take any value between minus 1.5 and 0.5 if the transmitted symbol x was minus 0.5 and similarly it can take any value between minus 0.5 and 1.5 if, if the transmitted symbol was 0.5 is that clear any question you can ask if you are having some question regarding this uh no uh, i was thinking means uh yeah by that formula uh, we got to know that uh, when x is minus uh, 0.5 we were mm -hmm. uh, actually adding the like uh, our noise could be minus 1 up to plus 1 is what we were uh, saying right yes correct uh, means uh, the the values means from minus 1 to plus 1 what we will see means the, that is the range of noise Uh, yes, from yes. minus one to one. Yeah, one of those values, some real value in between yeah, minus one and plus one minus can one. get added. Ah, uh, minus one is the least uh, uh, noise value, yes. and minus plus one is the yeah, plus one. largest yes. noise value. Yes, yes. Okay. Ah, uh, thank so you. So the received value will look like this. So the received will value will have a density like this. So now one thing is very clear. Suppose the received value is less than, say, if the received value is in between minus one point five, less than or equal to y. Less than uh, minus point five. Then what is x hat? Can somebody tell that by looking at these two figures? So if I transmit point five, can I receive minus one point five? No, right? If I receive point five, the received value must stay in between minus point five and one point five. So If the received value is my between minus one point five and minus point five, that means in this region, correct? The transmitted symbol must be equal to minus point five. Similarly, in this region, after point five and between point five less than y less than one point five, x hat equal to point five. Is this clear to everyone? So the confusion. happen the com confusion is regarding only the values received values that lies in between minus 0.5 and plus 0.5 is that clear in that region we need to apply map rule and we need to see that region corresponds to whether x equal to minus 0.5 or x equal to 0.5 is that clear yes yeah so basically we need to compare these two values right this is the first value and this is the second value let us do that probability of x equal to 0.5 given y this can be written as using conditional probability say there are conditional probability of a given b equal to probability of a comma b the joint probability divided by probability of b this is the definition of conditional probability using that we can write this as probability of x equal to 0.5 comma y the joint probability divided by probability of y so i will erase this which is equal to so again using conditional probability definition we can write it as probability of y given x equal to 0.5 into probability of x equal to 0.5 Divided by probability of y. Is this clear to everyone? Similarly, probability of x equal to minus point five given y equal to probability of y given x equal to minus point five into probability of x equal to minus point five divided by probability of y. Okay. Now we need to compare these two. probability of y given x equal to 0.5 into probability of x equal to 0.5 divided by probability of y whether it is greater than or less than probability of y equal to y given x equal to minus 0.5 
into probability of x equal to minus 0.5 divided by probability of y. Right? So we know all these probabilities. What is probability of y given x equal to 0.5? I'm talking only the, the region between minus 0.5 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 0.5. Correct? So in this region, what is probability of y given x equal to 0.5? So again, all these values are half, half, correct? So these probabilities are half, the density is equal to half. So probability of y given x equal to 0.5 is half into probability of x equal to 0.5. What is that? It is given as three by four. Probability of x equal to 0.5 is three by four and probability of x equal to minus 0.5 is one by four. So this is three by four divided by d of y and we need to compare with this is again half probability of y given x equal to minus 0.5 is half and probability of x equal to minus 0.5 is 1 by 4 so again p of y so this two will get cancelled out now we know that this one is higher correct so for the entire region for minus 0.5 less than y less than or equal to 0.5 according to map rule the a posteriori probability of x equal to 0.5 is greater than the a posteriori probability of x equal to minus 0.5 or in other words probability of x equal to 0.5 given y is greater than probability of x equal to minus 0.5 given y that means x hat equal to 0.5 even in this case so we have already found out these two things. So now we got this x hat equal to 0.5 even when minus 0.5 less than y less than or equal to 0.5. So now the complete decision region will look like this. Between minus 1.5 and minus 0.5, if the received value lies in between that, then the map rule tells that x hat equal to minus 0.5. In all the other cases, if the received value is anything between minus 0.5 and 1.5, then the map rule, the map detector will tell that the transmitted symbol x hat equal to plus 0.5. So what is alpha? Can somebody tell that now? What is the value of alpha? 0 0.5. 0 0.5. No, it's a decision boundary. Yeah, it is minus 0.5. See, you see it carefully here. So whenever the y value is in between, y value is greater than 0.5, minus 0.5, sorry. Y value Six. is greater than minus 0.5. That means minus 0.5 to 1.5. Whenever y greater than or equal to minus 0.5, x hat equal to 0.5. So look at here. Whenever y greater than or equal to alpha, x hat equal to 0.5. That means alpha equal to minus 0.5. Right? Is that clear? Any questions? If you are having no questions, we can wind up the session. And if you are having some... So this is one more question that is completely related with the previous one, that map rule. This is something that I wanted to do today. Okay. Kate set 2015, set 1, 262. Exactly this question. Exactly this question I You, I will try to do this in the next class. Is this, like, what is I the think topic? 62. Of... Question number 62, right? Yeah, 62 and uh, 24. These are related with what topic? Uh, these are related to same topic, sir, which we are really Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. So I will try to do this in the next class or in the coming classes. Okay. So in the next class, I have scheduled it to be related with signals and systems. So due to that, I may do some questions related with signals and systems because I had to give all the, all the topics beforehand for the first three weeks. Okay. So I will add these questions in the coming sessions. Okay. If you are having some other questions, you can ask me. 
otherwise we will wind up the session i think there is one other session that is happening right from 7 to 8 i should not uh, interfere with that and the second question i did not get it which one the second one this one or this the one below pass signal yeah yeah so what is your doubt in this at the end i got totally confused regarding this 350 hertz yes okay okay i will explain that okay there are you are comfortable with these three frequency regions right the first signal corresponds to uh, this frequency region and the signal second component m square t has a frequency that is less than or equal to 2w and the third part has a frequency it resides in the frequency region 2400 minus 2w to 2400 plus 2w is that clear mm. up to that this clear yes. right yes okay now basically what are the desired frequency region what is the desired frequency region that is this one right 1200 minus w less than or equal to f less than or equal to 1200 plus w right yes yes on, only that component should come at the only that frequency component should present at the output of the filter that is clear right yes yeah and the, and coming to the second part m square t divided by 2 which has a frequency region that should be less than that is nothing but less than or equal to 2w right that occupies frequency region from frequencies from 0 to 2w correct yes so basically none of those frequency components should be present at the pass band of the filter because if that is present then that will appear at the those frequency components not the entire signal so whichever frequency component that is there between 0 and 2w and that intersect with 700 to 1700 1700 that is the pass band right that will come at the output of the filter isn't it similarly coming to this the third component as well that is also an undecided uh, region right yes 2400 minus 2w to 2400 plus 2w should not appear at the output of the pass band should not mm, appear yes. at yeah in the pass band right yes yeah what does that mean so so out of these 2400 suppose this is like this okay this is 2400 minus 2w then it should be it should not come less than 1700 or in other words 2400 minus 2w should be greater than or equal to 1700 is this condition clear yes it means that w less than or equal to 350 correct so yeah. suppose like and i hope you understood this less than or equal to 500 argument that is very clear right this this component between 1200 minus w and 1200 plus w should appear at the output of the filter okay right? yeah so anyway it should be less than or equal to 500 that you also agree right which one yeah, yeah. yes that it should is. Be less than or equal to 500 hertz that you agree right Yes, because it should be in the bandwidth. Yes. Yeah, that, that should be in the pass band. So, yes. suppose, say something greater than, say, if you assume uh, if W to be 351 heads, okay? Then this left, left side of, or otherwise, also there is one more condition, right? F should be less than or equal to 2W. Suppose if it is, say, 351 heads, then the the m square t component will come like this up to 702 right Correct? yes yeah so from 700 to 702 some undecided frequency components are present it may not be as minute as this it appears yes. because i i drew the diagram like this anyway there will be a positive frequency component that there will be a frequency component non zero frequency component present between say whatever frequency that is greater than 700 700 to 702 that is also not permitted according to the question nothing should come at the output of the uh, pass band uh, 
output of the filter other than the desired signal 10 times x of t so it should be less than or equal to 350 or it should be less than 350 basically it cannot be even 350 but in real world you can take less than or less than or equal to as almost the same thing yeah okay now i got it yeah yeah okay so if you are having some Oops. suggestions for questions you can also tell otherwise you can share with me later as well okay yeah yeah and which question number is this this one this is from 2015 set uh, session one uh, this is question number 51 and first question first question is from 2016 session three question number 22 2016 session three yeah, yeah. okay and hey, last one is Last one is uh, 2019, 40, question number 40. Okay. Yeah. So if somebody else... And we will again... Perhaps the recordings will be recorded. Yeah. Have a PDF? No PDFs, but I am I am recording the uh, this live session. I do not know how would this be shared. I will share with the NPTEL team. They they may share this because I am uploading everything in a, everything in a um, drive. Their NPTEL drive. Sure, sir. Thank you. Yeah, there will be a delay for because this is just the beginning, right? So maybe after one week or so, you may get access to this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.